principal concentration should be on the food, nothing else. And you should uh, basically praise your food whenever you're eating it. While when you're eating it, if you don't praise your food, definitely that's not going to act in a beneficial manner in your body. These are some of the herbs which are normally prescribed or you might be using in your kitchen for total health or for wellness. Like one is black pepper. Now black pepper is rich in pepperine and chivinic acid. These increases bioavailability. So whenever you are adding black pepper instead of uh, paprika or red pepper, what it does, it, it improves your bioavailability of the products. So whatever vitamins that are going to come, in this particular food are getting absorbed in your daily diet as well as black pepper has been used for ages in Ayurveda for various elements specifically kafaj or cough related where you are having bronchitis or asthma or even common cough and cold. We are using black pepper along with honey along with ginger to reduce cough related elements. Also black pepper contains one capsicine which is also good for joint pain. So whenever we are using a black pepper oil mixed with some olive oil we can rub it on our inflamed joints to reduce pain and to reduce stiffness etc. Cumin seeds, jeera which is very commonly flavored uh, uh, herb in our daily day to day routine in Indian dishes. This particular seed is used for reducing cholesterol, blood sugar, glucose level. It's also helpful in improving lactation in uh, females. It's good also for hormonal disturbances like PCOS and uh, with, uh, females doesn't have a natural cycle. So you can start with cumin seeds. They help in uh, relieving the symptoms of dysmenorrhea and painful menstruation. Now, turmeric everybody knows is known for its chemical properties. This is the natural disinfectant useful in cuts and burns for ages. The active compound is curcumin which when combined with cauliflower is useful in prostate cancer. It stops the growth of existing prostate cancer as well. Slows the progression of Alzheimer. There is no specific remedy for Alzheimer's in Western world. So you can rely on turmeric because the incidence of Alzheimer in Indian subcontinent is less because of more usage of turmeric. In every fruit we are using it. Then it has got anti-inflammatory action which helps to reduce the instances of rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis and joint pains. Now everybody knows avla or Indian gooseberry. This has got around 20 times vitamin C which is present in an orange juice or orange, orange pulp. It's useful as anemia because it contains a lot of amino acids. So if a person is interested in uh, having a complete nourishment, so definitely you can eye for avla. Then it's useful in diabetes, in diarrhea or even in digestive disorders. Hepatic disorders like uh, slow action of enzymes for liver. It's got great antioxidant properties and avla also contains allergic acid and tannins which are useful to improve your immunity to reduce the infections as well as in some conditions of cold and cough you can use avla with black pepper with honey which reduces your overall adenoids and tonsil tonsillitis problem. Fenugreek, this is rich in proteins, amino acids, lot of micronutrients, iron, ascorbate, folates. As it is being used for resortive and nutritive problems, it improve, uh, reduces your overall blood sugar level, improves the uh, level of serum cholesterol levels and healthy digestive system. Now, cinnamon is being used for reducing the blood sugar level. Cinnamon tea is very famous. You can have a green tea made from cinnamon and contains essential oils like eugenol, which has antiviral and properties in oral and genital herpes, useful in diabetes and controlling cholesterol. There's a lot of studies which claim that 
cinnamonum reduces triglycerides as well. So, if a person is having a history of diabetes in family, they can start cinnamonum in their regular tea, which helps to reduce the instances of triglyceridemia and hypercholesteremia. The fennel oil, again fennel is normally used as a digestive in our foods. We chew it and we relieve our gases, flatulence and bloating. So this particular oil is being used to promote menstruation as well as to elevate the symptoms of dysmenorrhea. So when we consider uh, wellness, so there can be n number of reasons for duodenal ulcers. The primary factor according to Ayurveda can be dietary factors like eating spicy food or eating from outside or food which are combined with fat or skipping meals. So these are the common reasons of duodenal ulcer. Then there are other factors like psychological which include excessive anger. So they can also lead to duodenal ulcers. Some daily routine things which when disturbed can cause ulcers or acidity kind of symptoms are sleep disturbances, excessive traveling in sun. So what we need to do is to balance the reason and then accordingly the treatment becomes easy. So if you are eating a lot of spicy food, so to neutralize that you can have cucumber or capsicum kind of thing which can neutralize your acids. And if you are having excessive anger, so to decrease your anger you can have Brahmi and Ashwagandha which have psychosomatic effect and reduces your anger. Likewise there are Yashti Madhu or licorice which is very useful to reduce the ulcers, the size of ulcers as well as vomiting and nausea tendencies. For sleep disturbances, if somebody is having sleepless nights, definitely then the next morning when you wake up you have acid blunches or burping or some acidity going and coming. So what we need to do have is a jatamasi or nostradicus jatamasi which is an Ayurvedic herb which elevates your sleeplessness, it improves your sleeping habits and specifies your pitta. The latest problem which everyone is talking about across the globe is to reduce weight. So there can be n number of reasons which are commonly known to every one of us for gaining weight but some are like metabolic disorders, thyroid, endocrine imbalances. When we talk about Ayurveda, so there can be possibilities of having imbalance of Vayu and Kapha because mental contentment or mental satisfaction is necessary. Whatsoever we earn, we always remain unsatisfied and that leads to certain disturbances which are related to our psychological being and that can lead to binge eating. Like if a person is angry, definitely the person is going to opt for roasted and lot of non-veg stuff. Like if we are in depression, we go for sweets something creamy stuffs like pastries and uh, cakes. So that eating habit definitely disturbs our mind and we have to take care of that and accordingly we can reduce our weight as well. Now punch karma is a type of treatment where we are talking about improper and irregular diet which leads to health problems and there is exposure to lot of chemicals like uh, methylates, parabens, which are commonly found even in our cosmetics. So all these could lead to health problems, tension, stress. So we have different methodologies which actually act on the basic roots, root cause and remove that. So the benefits of Panchkarma is it's very good to normalize weight, normalization of excreta like if somebody is having co chronic constipation then oil enema or decoction enema is going to help. Similarly, it increases the flexibility of joint like in the initial stages of rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis one can have a bengam which improves your overall mobility and agility. Improved appetite and physical endurance. Improved biochemical profile of blood like if you are talking about cholesterol, high blood sugar levels, uric acid, creatinine, so definitely the detox, detox mechanism helps to reduce that improved appetite and physical endurance, improved quality of sleep. We have a very specific treatment called Shirodhara which 
helps to reduce sleep disorders, abnormal and uh, social behaviors or oh, social behaviors, hyperactivity kind of things. So according to Lord Buddha, to keep a body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we should not be able to keep our mind strong and clear. Wishing all a healthy life. Good evening everybody, I am Dr. Snegda, I am from Mantra Vedic Spa. Here today I am going to speak on the same topic, Ayurveda for holistic well-being. Uh, the word Ayurveda comes from two words, that is Aisha Veda, Ayurveda, it is the knowledge of uh, life. Uh, it, is, it will help uh, to live a long life and a healthy life. Benefits of Ayurveda is Swastasya, Swastya Rakshanam, Ayatarasya, Vikar Krishna. So in this we emphasize more on prevention than cure. And uh, we try to harmonize the doshas, that is Vat, Pitt and Kaf. And here we try to focus on the holistic development also, your mental, physical and the psychological well-being also. And the medicines which we use are close to nature. The herbs, the minerals, everything are close to nature. Uh, and we have uh, treatment for all the chronic diseases which uh, are uh, people suffering like uh, cardiovascular diseases, depression, diabetes, hypertension, etc. So you may have heard of qualities of Vat, Pitt and Kaf. Today I am going to try and then make you understand what is Vat, Pitt and Kaf. Actually the whole, uh, the concept is like the body is made up of five elements, air, ether, fire, water, and earth. So vat is like, it uh, reflects the qualities of air and ether. Pith reflects the qualities of fire and water. And kaf reflects the qualities of earth and water. Let us understand what vat is. Vat is something uh, which ke keeps moving. It gives movement to the body. It is a force that governs all our biological aspects of your body. Vat is called the king of doshas. Be it is because of this, the other aspects like pith and kaf, they move. So if a pith kind of a personality, they have they to follow a diet and lifestyle which increases the vat factor, that is air and ether, they will have, uh, they will may suffer from a very dry skin, dry hair, they may have interrupted sleep, they may have a very quick mind and they're always restless. They're very anxious. Every small